Hello there, Brother Moreau here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And today, just a, well, not really a scenario, but a request from Twitch chat from Skulga. Can I have a look at the German Super Battleship? Now, the German Super Battleship, as I've been poking around, first becomes available in 1929, and we're going to have, um, as uh, Fighter Pilot 555 puts it, a, a war game with live ammunition against the Italians. <laughs> Okay, let's get to designing. So, you see the Super Battleship 2 quite a lot, um, because it's the one that goes all the way up to 130,000 tons and all the rest of it. So I'm actually going to look at the Super Battleship 1. I'm going to try and do a realistic build today. So I'm actually going to go for the smallest one. I mean, small is relative with Super Battleships, but let's go for the 90-ish thousand ton version. Uh, now, towers, wow, that one's really heavy, for uh, not a huge amount, I mean, base accuracy goes from 26 to 30, plus 10 long range accuracy, plus 5 comms range, which doesn't really matter at the moment, plus 10 damage control, that's pretty good, plus 10, uh, plus 6 smoke interference, something like that. I'm actually going to go with the modern tower one, I think. And then we have the secondary towers, which are pretty similar in weight, but I think I'm actually going with the second, modern secondary tower two, which will give the ship. A nice appearance but I'm not spending a massive amount of displacement on the towers I'm still already I've immediately gone to 52,000 tons um, just just putting the superstructures on these, these things are heavy um, I should put transport in <laughs> probably but that's just that's just this is cruel <laughs> hello there private Pershing finally made a stream welcome welcome um, I do need to vary up the time. I basically stream when I can. Um, but yeah, re really glad to see you. Oh yeah, the advanced tower with funnel. Um, if you haven't seen that. Uh, this is actually the um, Russian, although I think a few other nations use it, main tower, which has a funnel slot, reversed. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they put it in as a as a temporary thing. Because a lot of people were saying you can't fit enough funnels on on the super battleships and stuff like that. Um, could, you, could you add a tower? And of course, the devs team is extremely small. Um, so they, they put that in as a kind of stopgap. And to, uh, they did say that they were going to work on some actual bespoke uh, rear towers that have funnels. Right, we've got 86 smoke interference to play with, so that's an Uber Funnel 5. It doesn't fit. Ooh, interesting, so we have to go with a 3. Hmm, okay. Uh, <laughs> what about doing the Battle of Jutland, but it's 1890? No, um, I didn't wake up with a desire to inflict gross amounts of punishment on myself <laughs> this morning. Okay, one of the things I do like about these towers, though, is they do come with built-in barbettes, which means that this is absolutely perfect for a four uh, turret setup for your main guns. Now, let's see, what do we get? Mark threes, Mark ones. So the sweet spot is the 16 inch. Let's go for jewels, as soon as we're going for four turrets. A little bit of a four weight offset. There we go. Lovely stuff. And then secondary guns. Uh, I believe the only guns that fit on the top, there are four inch guns on this particular build. And I like having a unified um, secondary battery. So. I'll go with four inch. Now you can see here the towers don't fit anything higher up. Four inch, but I think they do. 
Yeah, they do for threes and possibly twos. Um, given that I've got fours, I don't need threes, but we'll put some two inch guns up here. Um, yeah, it does fit them right up here on the top. Just kind of, kind of wacky. That that'd be a really. Uh, imagine being stationed on that gun. <laughs> anyway, I think that's I think that's good good uh, good base for the ship. We've got a pitch is pretty good. Roll is pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's that's not bad. Right, let's build out the rest of the ship. So. We're going to go for maximum bulkheads. Let's leave it at medium range. I wonder how fast we can make this thing go. Probably not very. That is a problem with the German super battleships. They tend to be a little bit on the slower side. 25 knots. I mean, that's not terrible for the era. It's certainly not a fast battleship, but uh, it's fast enough. I think was it Queen Elizabeth's class was about 25 knots. Um, let's go for turbo electric drive and a good propeller shaft so that we can actually turn this thing. Yeah, they do use up a lot of space, the superstructures beyond. You're, you're absolutely right with that. But they do come with the built-in barbettes. Um, but they are chunky, chunky things. I do think they just, they do look fantastic though. And they, they have this really nice look about them. Um, obviously we want good protection. Um, radar fire control and a hydrophone. Shells. Now, generalists, yeah, high TNT standards, possibly. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, let's go with high TNT standard shells. It's a 4% flash fire chance, which is just about acceptable. Um, we could go for full-on autoloaders, but I've actually been having quite a lot of success with semi-auto loaders, so we'll go with that. Um, and let's go with electro hydro turrets today, just 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 for something different, because I nearly always go with the advanced trigger light. Okay. Uh, oh, might you suggest white powder? You can suggest white powder. Let's have a look. I never use white powder. Um, Poudre B. Um, gun range, penetration, damage, muzzle velocity, lowers your ammo detonation chance. Let's see now. I guess me an ammo detonation uh, flash fire chance of five percent. If I go with white powder standards. Uh, if I go super heavy, um, my flash fire chance gets uncomfortably high <laughs> so I won't be doing that um, oh thank you fighter pilot so war, war spike when lifting the skirts was about 25 26 knots so given that most of the British battleships in 1929 were the Queen Elizabeth's plus the revenge class which was slower and the Nelson's this would be kind of a counter to the uh, counter to the Queen Elizabeth's, definitely. And it will beat a Nelson through sheer power. <laughs> and yes, as you are quite right, this is going to be chonky, <laughs> Private Pershing. Um, and beyond, this is going to have a very, very chunky armor scheme. Uh, hello there, uh, Zed. Tated two. Uh, this is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Um, hmm. We go for a 20 10 scheme. Oh, yeah, we can. Uh, 10 5. No. 
10 fives pushing it. We also want 20. We maybe go for what, like an eight, eight, four deck. Yes. And what, I don't know, 20 on the tower? 20 on the tower, lovely. Um, and then I probably just want a little bit more belt extended. If I can get it. And fill the rest up with tower. Armor. Oh my goodness. Thank you very much for the follow. Uh, WW243 Dogma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the channel. Uh, welcome to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. So we ha here we have the Schliessen, uh, just over 90,000 tons, 25 knots, medium range, maximum bulkheads, ungodly price, 189.5 million for this thing. Wow. Okay, for comparison, if you see my The Next Generation video on YouTube, where I make a semi-realistic... Um, KG-5-esque battleship for the Royal Navy in 1932, so a couple of years after this. That was 111 million, so this thing is expensive. Well, let's hope that she uh, can perform. And uh, for those in the comment section, no, I do not know how Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought dollars compared to real dollars. Um historical or otherwise, but basically if you multiply the costs by 10, you get a kind of equivalent in modern 20, 21 dollars-ish. So this thing's about 1.9 billion to build, I reckon. If you, if it was like, with compared to a modern Navy buying it, like purchasing power and all the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that in Great Depression era Reichmark? Well, this is uh, actually, in 1929, this is pre-Reichmark. This would just be regular old Deutschmark. Um, Weimar Republic era. Um, if we were going historically, the Weimar Republic could not and would not be allowed to build this thing. And couldn't afford to build this thing if they wanted to. But that is technically who built it. Or possibly it's uh, Germany um, that didn't didn't lose World War One, and it's the Kaiser Marine. But who knows? Right, let's go. Good looking ship, though. <laughs> Hello there, uh, Rati Mobbins. Welcome to the stream. Uh, this is actually 1929, so this would have been built right as the Great Depression hit. <laughs> or ordered when the Great Depression hit. Or just before. 50 destroy. Oh, no, Sunless. No, don't make me do 50 destroyers. I guess 50 destroyers. Do you remember what happened the last time I tried to do that? <laughs> just a big angry ball of ships in the middle of the, the, the map doing nothing. Right, let's see what the Italians have brought. That's um, a curious design. See, I don't know why the AI does things like this. Um, I'd like to see this optimised because the only reason you need this turret on a barbette um, is if you're going to put guns down here. Now, those don't have to be main guns. It could be secondary guns or torpedo tubes or something, but that's... looks like they forgot to put the fourth turret on. Just take it off the barbet. Uh, AI. Let's see, here it has put on the extra turret. That's actually not a bad looking ship. I mean, it's probably cordite minimum bulk kits or something stupid, but you know, uh, so the the maximum number of ships, uh, Rati Mobbins in Ultimate Admiral Custom Battles currently is 100 total. 
So you can do 1 versus 99, or you can do 50 v 50, but you can't go beyond that, basically. <laughs> Tell that to the dust. <laughs> yeah, you, I mean, there are reasons to put a gun on a barbet, but it's extra weight that you don't really need and need to spend like this is needless cost and money displacement and money sunk into that barbet for making the ship less combat effective because this will increase the pitch by putting the turret up higher like that oh not pitch the roll sorry not by much but it will will affect it Fifty torpedoes boats versus fifty torpedo boats. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, torpedo boats are only available at the start of the game because they get completely replaced by destroyers. Uh, this is custom battles, of course. Um, We've no idea what the campaign will look like. If you're watching this after the campaign is out, then uh, you will, you can uh, tell me <laughs> uh, if you can still use torpedo boats later on. I'm sure you probably can, but they'll be like obsolete or something. And you wouldn't want to use them. Oh, now there is a good reason from Telemonian Dan. It increases your negative elevation, potentially, allowing you to shoot downwards at submarines. Yes, unfortunately, as you can see, the guns fire flat. That's their minimum elevation. Okay, Bjorn, uh, Automod just held a message from you, and I can't change it easily when I'm recording. Um, try putting a space in between N3 and G3, because apparently N3 slash G3 hull is bullying, according to Twitch. <laughs> I don't know what kind of slang it is, but we are referring to battleships. Well, it's not Twitch, to be fair. It's, um, it's Automod, but... Automod is a little bit um, over enthusiastic sometimes. <laughs> uh, no hits scored by either side yet. I think we can see the, all their ships now. So we have. Looks like the battleship and the battle cruiser with. I think the light. Cruiser, well, that could be the heavy cruiser. That's a destroyer with four funnels, pretending to be an American destroyer. It's kind of cute how it goes little big, little big. And uh, this might be the light cruiser. Possibly. Can't tell. Hello there, Mom. How are you doing? Oh, that's a good, that's a good point, Dogma. Yeah, it could be used simply to balance the ship, although it's a very expensive way of balancing the ship um, without moving the turret out from the main arm belt. Um. Yeah, so you got. Yeah, it is a big. It's a long destroyer, very long. Compared to this cruiser here. And then we've got. Where's the other one? This one? Oh, yeah, they've stuck a, <laughs> a full on medium barbet on there. <laughs> oh, AI. You do do some interesting things sometimes. 
Anyway, we have scored a hit on something. The... Oh, we hit the cruiser by accident. Oh dear. <laughs> Poor cruiser. Took a hit in return. 17 inch gun. Oh, hello. Scored a hit in return on the secondary gun. I'm just going to time accelerate till we get some IDs. Come on, spotters. I oh, don't like 60%. Oh no, the battleship's 90. Also got pretty good accuracy at this point. Another hit. <laughs> yeah, the trouble with doing massive fleet battles um, at the moment is... Uh, you, you can do them early on in the game the timeline, but if you do them later, they're actually not as fun as you might expect. Um, but we can try. So here we have the Valdor Coronato. Sorry, not the Valdor. The Valor Coronato. Minimum bulkheads, 17-inch guns, firing white powder as well. Okay. Armor of a cruiser... Uh, yeah, not not overly impressive. A hundred million, yikes! And then we have the battlecruiser Lepanto, fifteen-inch guns, minimum bulkheads, about fifty million. Even worse armor. Lidite. Oh my! Might be seeing some fireworks today. Looks like the um, captain of the ship has decided that the battle cruiser has to go. Pretty heavy hit. Mm, still alive though. Just about. Comes the next set. And we've got the destroyer here, the Carabinieri, which just fired torpedoes. We have. So this one was the light cruiser. With seven inch guns, yikes! And a load of torpedoes they just fired. And then we have a heavy cruiser, which also has torpedoes, and six-inch guns. Interesting. Right. Hard to port. A large cruiser, large heavy cruiser. So in Ultimate Admiral, I think they've made the wise decision to make large cruisers a type of battle cruiser hull. <laughs> um, and to my mind there's two there's basically two types of battle cruiser you can build in the game. You can build a true battle cruiser that has battleship quality guns, so 15 inch say. Or you can build build a cruiser killer type ship which has a smaller caliber like uh, 12 inch guns on a very, very heavily armoured frame. Um, and yeah, it's just it's semantics. Uh, and you've probably seen me doing things like. Um, like I did the light cruiser that had 
just only had four inch guns that actually did very well. Um, I've got another one in the pipeline where I build a large light cruiser. Uh, You know, you, you you can mess around. You can build battle cruisers that are more like regular. Oh my! What happened to you? A four-inch gun detonated your ammo ammunition. Oh my goodness! I also noticed the destroyer is now out of ammunition. Which is hilarious. The battleship took a massive hit, and so did the cruiser. I think by accident, San Pietro. Oh my word. Ah, yeah, down goes the battleship, purely due to flooding. She took 12 hits from the 16 inch guns. That's it. Oof. Hey, Sunless, you must be playing uh, some more Forge Alliance. Strategic launch detected. Uh, cruelty to small ships, indeed. As uh, we turn the main battery actually onto the heavy cruiser. Oof. I mean, the battle cruiser is the only one that can uh, threaten us with guns, but. Don't put minimum bulkheads on your capital ships, it's just not a good idea. Cruiser has many bulkheads, light cruiser has maximum, and the destroyer has maximum. So yeah, it's only the capital ships they were like, no, nah, we don't need Oops. <laughs> As the cruiser runs into the sinking wreck of the battleship. Did we just hit the destroyer by accident? We did. <laughs> With a 16 inch shell. Oh my word. Yes, this is indeed cruelty. I mean, they still have that battle cruiser over there, technically. But uh, it's not proven massively effective. Meanwhile, they've kind of scratched the paint on the Schliessen, but yeah, not a lot of damage at all. Uh, and that's from 10 hits from 17 inch guns and 19 from 15 inch guns. So it's not like they're not hitting us. But are they doing damage? No. No, they are not. A bit too much lead on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I love um, I love uh, Supreme Commander. Um, I'm terrible at it, but I do love it. Sentence clutch intensifies. That is that that is a fantastic map. Absolutely fantastic. A no bulkhead setting. Well, minimum pretty much is no. no. What's a bulkhead? You know, um, it's ridiculous. Thank you for the glass cannon bid that made my day. I'm um, like, whoa, torpedoes! I didn't think you guys had reloaded your torpedoes yet. Um, yeah, that one. <laughs> that one was fun. Be one of those single launches. Too busy chit chatting away, not paying enough attention. Looks like the light cruiser is now out of torpedoes. Yeah, that's probably out of the, uh, the heavy cruiser. Uh, no. Yeah, really don't care if you're going to hit me for 73 damage. There's the, there's the rest of the torpedoes. Continue the turn. Uh, 
Oh, we've got a target lock. Error. Let's see if we can fix that. Okay. Nope. Broken again. Wait till we finish the turn. wondering why I'm targeting the heavy cruiser, it's because they still have torpedoes. I'd like to put them out of action. There we go. That'll probably do it. Still alive. Might need another salvo to finish it off. I'm pretty sure that that has done it in. Right, main guns on to the battle cruiser. Now, I'm not sure it's wise for a battle cruiser to approach to within three kilometers of a ship like this. All right, Sunless. Have a good one. And immediately enormous damage. <laughs> oh dear. Lepanto. You're not having a very good day of it. You're about to get even worse. Oh my word, just look at that. Blocked ricochets. And exploded. <laughs> Uh goodbye. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Uh, so what's left? The light cruiser and the destroyer, I think. <laughs> His turret did, did get some height. And even the four inch guns are actually not doing a bad job <laughs> hurting that light cruiser, but I think we can uh, do something a little bit more spectacular in a minute. There we go. Oh my goodness. That's not critical damage, though. Can you fire an AP at that light cruiser? Um, it just does have a 4 inch belt. Oof. That's a lot of flooding. I'm not sure it can keep that out. Especially with all their engines out. No. Down she goes. Which means it's just a poor little destroyer left. Which seems a bit mean. Ranging shots are in. Oh, there we go. Cabernet, Cabernet. Not your day, my friend.
<laughs> Smoke. Even the four inch guns are probably enough to take it out, but those massive hits from the 16 inch guns don't hurt. And down she goes. Well, there we go. One example of the German Super Battleship 1. Um, and uh, aside from bankrupting an entire country, uh, <laughs> pretty effective ship, I would say. Um, let me know in the comments down below what you uh, what you think of her and uh, what you think could be improved. And uh, yeah, I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye-bye.